Ladies and gentlemen, in this Elden Ring video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Lightning God build. This is going to prioritize strength and faith to dish out massive damage with the multiple weapons that we keep on hand, allowing us to posture break enemies extremely quickly while dealing insane single target damage alongside great AoE. This build brings it all to the table. Let's get into it. So we're going to be going with two main weapons for this build. And both of these weapons are going to serve their own purpose and excel depending on the situation you find yourself in. This keeps us very aggressive in combat, allowing us to apply heavy pressure to break enemy stances very quickly. We're going to be leaning heavily into the Ashes of War that come with each of these weapons, that being the Death Knight's Long Haft Axe and the Death Knight's Twin Axes. Both of these are coming with a very interesting and unique Ash of War called the Blink Bolt. Now, this functions a bit differently depending depending on what weapon you're using. For the Great Axe, you transform into a bolt of lightning, charging at the target at a very high speed. And the follow-up heavy attack is this really high leaping slash that'll cause a lightning strike at the point of impact. This is a very strong ability, has high posture damage, and it's gonna keep you safe as it gives you additional iframes when you're in that teleporting state. Now, in the case of the Twin Axes, it's pretty much the same thing, but your follow-up heavy attack is now more of a AoE focused charging spinning slash. They both look pretty, they're both shockingly devastating attacks, but what I like the most about them is the teleport. This is really making you feel like this lightning god and moving around super fast with two different lightning damaging abilities and this is without even taking into consideration the incantations that are going to be complementing this build. It makes a lot of the harder encounters pretty straightforward and it's just such a good time. So the Death Knight's Long Haft Axe is what we have in our main hand and this is scaling with faith and strength. This is what we're mainly focusing on for this build specifically. We're going to go over the stats in a little bit and talk about some of the changes you can make in case you wanted to lean more into the dual wielding axes or more lightning damage and spell casting. But once you fully upgrade this axe, it's going to scale with a B in strength and a D in faith, which is very good. On our offhand, we have the Death Knight's twin axes, which is scaling with a C in strength and faith, and is exactly why these weapons work so well together. We're getting a double dip with both of these weapons scaling with just about the same stats. The seal we're using is the Gravelstone seal, and it's scaling with an S in Faith, while also boosting our Dragon Cult incantations. And this goes for both our weapons, Ash of War, and some of the incantations we're gonna be using on top of that. This brings us straight to the armor that we have equipped for this build. And I would highly consider going after the Death Knight's armor set, because this new DLC armor will even further boost your Dragon Cult incantations. So with the seal we just spoke about, plus the Death Knight's armor set, you're looking at around 10% increase in damage to all of your ancient dragon cult incantations which we're going to be using majority of the time now for those of you that have been watching me for a minute you already know i can care less about that i'm all about the fashion and we're blowing all this stuff up either way. So what you see in the footage and what I've been personally rocking is the consort's mask for a little extra bump in dexterity or the ruler's mask for some extra points in faith. We also have the tree sentinel's armor. It looks beautiful and it's putting us well over that 50 poise mark. And both the gloves and the pants are being from the Oathseeker's night set. Black and gold, it looks good, you feel good, but to each its own, put on whatever fits your thematic build theme. Talking about the talismans, we're using the faithful can Canvas Talisman to boost the potency of our incantations. We also have the Dragon Crest Great Shield giving us a bit more physical damage mitigation. I'm sorry, I need this in my life. I'll go over replacements in a second. Of course, we're also using the Lightning Scorpion Charm, raising our lightning attacks, but lowering our damage negation. But this is being countered by the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, so win-win for us. And last up, I'm going with the Two Finger Heirloom because at this point where I'm at with this build, it's time for me to start pumping points into faith, and this is going to give me a little head start on that. The replacements I would recommend for you though is if you don't need the Dragon Crest Great Shield, good for you by the way, I highly recommend the Shard of Alexander, boosting the damage of both your Ashes of War, and this is a staple to this build. And if you're not feeling the Two Finger Heirloom, you can always swap this out with the Two Headed Turtle Talisman, just in case you find yourself running out of steam mid fight. And do me a big favor if you're enjoying this video, think about hitting that like button for me, it helps me out a lot. Thank you so much guys. 
So typically the way this build works is you're going to be looking to use your Ash of War abilities as the bread and butter. I tend to set up more difficult fights with buffs we're going to talk about here in a second. And I'm always looking for the opportunity to swap between different weapons depending on what the situation calls for. Again, having that two-handed axe as the single target monster while being able to bring out the dual wield axes when AoE is needed is such a quality of life for this build that other builds don't tend to always have. Now, something that can't be overlooked as we start moving into the spells is the first one on our list is the Knight's Lightning Spear. This is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, incantation in the DLC. Not only does it deal a ton of damage, but the posture damage on this is incredible. On top of that, it also has pretty decent tracking. So when setting up a fight, this is such a key ability to start blasting with because you can get a few of these off before the enemy even reaches you, then follow up with that Ash of War, slamming down on the target, and it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to get a posture break on that enemy right away. Next on the list, we have the cheaper version, Lightning Spear. We use this to simply thin out a lot of the smaller mobs along the landscape, or even just to finish something off as it's much cheaper sitting at an 18 FP cost compared to its counterpart we just spoke about sitting at almost 30. We then have the multi-layered ring of light, which is a very cool spell. We can use this to set up choke points in hallways or narrow corridors when enemies are trying to rush you. It sends out a ring of light and once it reaches its destination, it expands and is going to float and start spinning around doing damage to anything inside it or trying to pass it. A very good spell if you haven't tried it yet. We also have the Landsax's Glaive, keeping with that lightning theme, and our final three are our buffs. I'm going with the Dragon Bolt Blessing, imbues our character's body with lightning, really making you feel like that lightning god. Then we got the classic Flame Grant Me Strength, and Golden Vow combo that could be a staple in any build. For the Flask of Wondrous Physique, honestly, I haven't tested what would work the best to really mid-max the damage here, but right now I'm going with the Strength Not Crystal tier, temporarily boosting our Strength, which at a quick glance will definitely be benefiting us considering this is a Strength and Faith build. And we also have the Lightning Shrouded Crack tier, boosting our Lightning damage because, well, you know. But if I had more time, others that I would consider you taking a look at is the Faith Not Crystal tier, boosting our faith even further, and the Stone Barb Cracked here, making it more likely to break enemy stances. This is something that we strive to do in this build anyways, and to have something to complement that aspect of it would be very nice. But let me know down in the comments if you come up with something unique for this. As for the stats we're going with for this build, starting with my character sitting at level 167, we're looking at 60 in health, 20 in mind, 30 endurance, 50 strength, 21 Dexterity, 9 Intellect, 48 Faith, and 14 Arcane. Now, if you're sitting at level 100, your stats are going to look more like this, with 40 in Health, 17 in Mind, 24 Endurance, 27 Strength, 13 in Dexterity, 9 Intellect, 35 in Faith, and 14 Arcane. The 40 Vigor is there to obviously keep us alive. We are wearing some pretty hefty armor in this build, but we're always looking to create pressure on the enemy by using our Ashes of War. We will definitely be trading blows, as we're pretty much always staying in that hand-to-hand -hand combat playstyle. 17 in Mind is there just to give us enough FP to cast a few spells, and I found that around 17 to 23 is a perfect amount to maintain a consistent use of our Ashes of War, which was the main focus in this build for me. We got 24 Endurance because we're looking to use heavy armor since we're always in the thick of it, and we're not using the green turtle talisman, so a bit of an extra bump in Endurance to keep us on the offensive is certainly not going to hurt. 27 in Strength, this is the stat that's competing with Faith. Look to bump this up as much as you can moving forward especially if you're looking to deal and play in more of that physical damage playstyle. If not, go the other way and bump Faith, but a great goal to set your strength at would be around that 55 to 60 mark. 13 Dexterity, we really don't need this stat too much. Maybe at the very end, late game, when you're really topping this off, but I'd still look to apply more points into other main stats. Our weapons don't really scale with this well at all. Yeah, if you're looking to main the dual wield axes, maybe that warrants a bit more points into it, but 12 Dexterity is all the weapon required requires to use, and stopping around 17 points, you're gonna do just fine. 9 in intellect, because it's not needed, but the 35 in faith is our next best thing. Again, this is where you decide what you mainly want out of this build, whether it's the magic and lightning damage, or physical. But this will be the second stat you want to bump up to around 50 to give you the best bang for your buck. And 14 in Arcane is there because the class I started with just came with it. So you'll actually have some extra points lying around somewhere that you can allocate where you see fit. But 
we don't use this stat. For anyone interested in making this more of a spell casting build, just swap like 15 or 20 points out of strength and put it right into faith and mind to bump up your mana pool a bit. Faith, you'd want to try to reach that 55 to 60 mark and you'll be more comfortable around 25 to 30 in FP. By the way, here are the locations for the Lightning Spear and the Great Axe. Both are found right here in the Scorpion Catacombs. The Twin Axes you can actually find even earlier, as they're being held in the Fog Rift Catacombs. But what's your thoughts on the DLC so far? You loving it? You hating it? Leave it in the comments below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that jazz. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!